Evelyn, thank you so much for joining me on the couch. You're welcome. Um, now, you have a standard life. You yes. are people director. Can you sort of give me first a very brief summary of, of, of what your sort of role within that company is in sort of like a top line? Sure. Um, so my uh, formal title is Group People Director for Operational Excellence, which is very grand. Um, so my day job is leading the operational HR services on behalf of Standard Life. I have around about 90 staff or so, um, delivering the whole life cycle in, in relation to our employees um, coming into the organisation and during their time in the organisation. Um, and I'm also program director for the HR Transformation Programme, which is a three-year programme of transformational change affecting both the function itself and the business. And one of the things that's really sort of surprised me over the last couple of months is, is seeing how many sort of HR people are really engaged with the whole cloud concept oh, yeah. and the move to cloud. I mean, how, is it a fairly new thing? Has it come by surprise or has it just been developing gradually? HR technology um, is far more cost efficient in the cloud. Um, and from a commercial perspective, irrespective of whatever company you work in, an HR platform is not the most important platform simply because the most important platform is a platform that will provide services to our customers in terms of revenue generation. So there's quite a challenge from a, an HR perspective to really justify a business case based on our ability to uh, purchase leading edge HR uh, technology. So a great way to do that is to rent it through the cloud. Um, and I think that's becoming more and more um, apparent now um, as a, a great way to bring in leading edge technology in the most cost, eff uh, cost effective and efficient way. So I think that's why us HR people are becoming more familiar with it. Now, operational excellence is also, you know, it's one of those terms that feels like a bit of an oxymoron yeah. for some companies, right? Um, and people and process, they're two things which don't seem to want to fit in some organisations together terribly well. How do you make those two very disparate elements come together and flourish in your work environment? I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, and one of the challenges that are faced um, of leaders who do have that accountability. And I think for me personally, um, people come first. So we need to be very, very commercial. So from my point of view, um, leading an operation within a, a company um, like Standard Life, um, we also need to consider ourselves uh, in terms of the delivery of services to a business and to make sure that the experience of delivering those services is what the customer would want, as well as making sure that it's the, the most cost-effective services that you deliver to that business. So being very, very commercial, being very customer-focused, and understanding when processes are important and cutting through when processes are non-added value. So for me, it's about making sure that the operation that I lead has a real understanding about their role as part of that operation, how they're delivering services to a customer. And that's not traditionally how HR would view themselves. They would view themselves as providing services to employees, but that's not how I view it. We are a commercial business unit that provides services to customers. Um, and once you crack that, and everyone starts thinking about the service and how cost effective and value adding we can be in terms of the experience from that customer, I think you can connect people and, and, and process together quite effectively.